What is going on, guys? Welcome to Grego's TV Daily Rewind, episode seven. This is where I go back a week and give you all of the news from the previous week in one single video so you don't have to do all the work. I did it for you. We have some really amazing news, especially if you want to know all about the Galaxy Note 9. We have tons of Galaxy Note 9 real life photos. We have a lot of press uh, press photos of the phone as well, what it's going to look like in lilac purple, the merging of the Galaxy Note 9 and the Galaxy S Plus line as well. And uh, we also have some Galaxy S10 news in there just to stir the pot with that Galaxy news and the Samsung news. So Watch it, guys. Thanks for watching and enjoy the show. First story of the day is today's Amazon Prime Day, and I've been kind of looking through the deals, and there's nothing that exciting. If you love Amazon products, then you're going to get some great deals right now. Um, there's an Essential phone, which was a flagship last year, um, and that was uh, uh, for 250 bucks right now. It's really inexpensive, and they put a ton of updates in there. It basically runs vanilla Android, doesn't have any bloatware, so if you're looking for that, I'll link it down below. But other than that, it's mostly just Amazon products with a few other products that are not Amazon thrown in as well. Next up, Guao Ming Hao, who is a well-known Apple analyst, actually put out a little news tidbit on the Galaxy phones that are coming out in 2019, specifically Galaxy S10 and Note 10, and again, a few other phones as well. And he's saying that they will implement the ultrasonic fingerprint reader, which is also going to be coming from Qualcomm, and it'll that's basically the fingerprint sensor that goes underneath the display. We've been hearing about this for a while, and uh, this is just further you know, fuel onto this fire that they're going to have a fingerprint sensor underneath the display, something some people want, some people don't care about. I personally am pretty excited about it. The other thing he said is out of the three variants of the Galaxy S10 that are coming out, the 5.8, 6.1, and 6.4 versions, only the 6.1 and 6.4 versions will have that ultrasonic fingerprint sensor underneath the display. And lastly, Samsung's mobile boss, DJ Ko, has been spotted at a conference with the Galaxy Note 9 in hand, using the S Pen, all of that stuff. And you can see from this photo on the back, you can tell it's the Galaxy Note 9 because you see the camera sensors, and then just below it, you see the fingerprint sensor showing you that that is the Galaxy Note 9. He's also using the S Pen with it. He doesn't have the colorful one, he's using the black one, it looks like with the black phone probably. Uh, other than that, there's really not much to see except for DJ Ko, beautiful young lady. Uh, to his right, two water bottles and the Galaxy Note 9. So there you go, if you're worried about the Galaxy Note 9 not existing, that's living proof that it does. First story of the day is Evan Blast leaked out an official image of the Galaxy Note 9. Let's take a closer look. This one looks like almost like a, uh, kind of like a dark or navy blue phone in the back. Uh, you see the two camera lenses, one's slightly larger than the other. You see the flash, you see the sensor to the right of that, and then you see the fingerprint sensor below that and obviously this is the Galaxy Note 9 because the fingerprint sensor is below it instead of to the right like the Galaxy Note 8. You see the Samsung branding uh, below that. And then on the front here, it's again what we've been expecting, slightly small bezels, nice big 6.4 inch uh, display. And then you have, there you go, the yellow S Pen with the blue phone and it looks like it's got like a blue uh, clicker at the top. And other than that, I think the phone looks really, really nice. It's really sleek. I like the color of the phone. I might have to go blue, especially with that yellow pen. It looks pretty dope. Also keep in mind, this phone is expected to have, again, a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED Infinity display with a Snapdragon 845 or an Exynos 9810, six gigabytes of RAM and a 4,000 milliamp battery. Next up, Slash Leaks leaked out three of the glass panels for the new iPhones coming out. From this image, you can see the 5.8, the 6.1, and the 6.5. The 6.5 looks enormous compared to the 5.8, and the 5.8, remember, was the one that came out earlier this year, but this is gonna be the updated version of it. And you can still see that um, notch up there is very large compared to a lot of other phones that are coming out. Doesn't look as large on the 6.5 just because the screen is so big but it's still a very large notch up there and uh, it gives you a good indication of what iPhone you might wanna get based off these sizes. The 6.1, remember, will be kinda the lower end one with the LCD display, whereas the other, the 5.8 and the 6.5, will have OLED displays and most likely better specs as well. 
And the last story is also about the Galaxy Note 9. It is a real life image of the Galaxy Note 9 just sitting there. Uh, yesterday we saw an image of DJ Ko, uh, who's the mobile boss there at Samsung and he had it just in hand using it. And this one's just the phone itself, the front and the back. And it's in black, you can see the back here. And on the back you can see no photo allowed, not for sale, do not leak info. And they put another sticker over it, you know, blocking out the serial number and all that so they don't get in trouble for sharing this image. But you too, see the two lenses, again, the flash, the sensor, fingerprint sensor. Um, the black, I mean, it, this thing's really fingerprinted up. Obviously, it's going to have the same kind of body in, as the uh, Galaxy Note 8, and it's going to get a lot of fingerprints on it because of that glass back. Um, you can always put a skin or a case to you know, stop with that, but it's definitely going to be a fingerprint magnet. And then on the front, looks slightly cracked or something. Maybe that's the, the plastic peeling off. I don't know. But um, again, kind of what you expected, but expecting what a Galaxy Note 8 will look like, Galaxy Note 9 will look very similar. First story of the day is about the Galaxy X. That is the foldable Samsung phone, and the Wall Street Journal has come out on a, with a report on this phone with a bunch of details. Uh, the first one being that the price is going to be about 1500 bucks or more. And we, the, one of the rooms we heard, I think it was gonna be like 1800 bucks, so that's definitely in that price range, 1500 bucks or more. Uh, also, you're looking at a seven inch display. Again, we've heard that before. Also, the saying the phone is gonna fold like a wallet, so it'll fold in half, and then when you fold it in half, it'll have an outside display that you can see um, even when it's folded up. So I guess that's kind of cool, um, and that'll allow you to still see and do things on the phone even when it's folded up. And then lastly, they said that it's gonna come out in early 2019. So you're looking at a kind of interesting device that could potentially take off or potentially just be like, eh, whatever, it's not a big deal. It's a phone that folds in half. We've had, you know, clamshell phones in the past that felt uh, folded in half that, you know, sure they had, there was an old school phone, but this is a smartphone. We'll see what ends up happening. It's, I'm interested for sure. Uh, but those are the details that we have thus far with the Galaxy X. Next up, Samsung is pushing out the June patch for the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus. And so not only will you get the security updates, you'll also get a few improvements as well. And those improvements are the following, the stability of the AR emoji, super slow-mo, and also the device itself. I know for sure my Galaxy S9 Plus actually since the last update has been a little bit buggy and it's definitely due for an update. Another report that came out from the Wall Street Journal was that the Bixby speaker, which is gonna be their alternative to the Google Home speaker, to the uh, Alexa speaker, to the uh, Apple HomePod, is gonna be coming out in the coming weeks and it'll retail for about 300 bucks. So if they were talking about the coming weeks, that leads us up to uh, Samsung Galaxy Unpacked event, which will be uh, on August 9th. So we might have potentially a lot of new products coming out on August 9th or being launched on August 9th. You're talking about the Galaxy Note 9, you're talking about the Bixby speaker, and then you're talking about my last story of the day as well, the Samsung Galaxy watch that is going to be it looks like officially the name that's the latest story it's supposed to launch on august 24th which is supposed to be the same release that we've heard with the galaxy note 9. Um, it's going to come in uh, two different sizes with different features um, it's also going to should have a 470 milliamp battery and it's also rumored to run tizen 4.0, which will be the latest version of Tizen. It doesn't talk any um, rumors about this running Android Wear OS. So you're looking at, uh, again, a bunch of new products on August 9th being launched or talked about. The Galaxy Watch should also come in sport and classic versions and then be in the colors of black, silver, and gold. Let's get into the news. Corning, who has created the Gorilla Glass, which is basically on almost every major flagship phone, which helps protect uh, the glass when it drops. So maybe a uh, Corning Gorilla Glass 5, and maybe it didn't break as easy when it fell on the ground. Well, they're coming out with Corning Gorilla Glass 6, and this is going to allow you, they say anyway, to drop your phone at least 15 times from one meter, which in American or in USA metrics, uh, whatever you want to call it, is about 3.3 feet. So it's a fairly good distance to drop it down. It's usually about where your pocket is. Uh, you'll be able to drop it and the glass should be safe. So you should, it's gonna have uh, multi-drop protection. I'm not too sure what Gorilla Glass 5 protection is in terms of how many times you're supposed to be able to drop it. I just know like in the past when people have just dropped it face down, it's cracked. 
we'll have to, and they're saying this is a different material than they've used in the past. Hopefully this rings true where you won't always drop, I mean, always break your phone when it does drop because it can be a total pain in the butt. And this also could potentially help with not having to use a case all the time, which would be kind of nice. And you always see the beauty of the phone and the slimness of the phone or however the, they design that phone to you know, physically be in your hand without a case. And the last story of the day is kind of a story, kind of not a story, but just kind of like a, a PSA uh, to let you guys know if you weren't, because I know you guys have asked in the past, the Galaxy Note 9, without a doubt, should and most likely will have stereo speakers. I know, you know, in the past, like some of you were like, is it going to have stereo speakers or not? The Note 8 did not have stereo speakers, but the Galaxy S9, S9 Plus did. It makes no sense for Samsung to release a, such a, a high flagship phone like the Galaxy Note 9 and not include stereo speakers. It would be the dumbest move ever and it make, would make absolutely really no sense at all. Um, it's going to be a phone that has a huge battery, 4,000 milliamps, a better camera, potentially more RAM up to 8 gigabytes depending upon where you get it. Um, definitely more base storage, 128 all the way up to 512 gigabytes of storage. So just some of these base features, you know, the stuff that you use, you use every single day is going to end up being, uh, obviously having that stereo speakers, you're gonna use that every day and it's gonna make the sound better. And that's a great upgrade over the Galaxy Note 8. The first story of the day is about the update that was pushed out for July, 2018 uh, for the S9 and S9 Plus, what well, looks like we found a few things out about that. We found something specifically that's enabled uh, in the camera now. So if you go into your camera and you've had this update already and you go into manual shooting mode, you're gonna have the option to shoot in 480 frames per second up to 0.4 seconds of video. Now, if you're into that, that's a new mode that's been added. That's very nice. Why not? The 960 is what they ultimately have for slowest, but now you'll also be able to shoot in 480 frames per second in manual mode. Next up, about the Galaxy Tab S4. If you've seen the screenshots of this tablet, you have not seen any physical buttons on it in terms of where you would put your fingerprint. Um, there's not one on the back, there's not one on the front, um, and there's also not one underneath the display, which has been rumored as well. It's been confirmed that there is zero, none, fingerprint sensor on the Galaxy Tab S4. Uh, they are ditching that in favor of iris scanning. So you'll be able to unlock the tablet with your iris scanning and I would assume obviously face unlock probably as well. Um, so they're ditching that, kind of going the way of what the iPhone X did where they completely removed the fingerprint sensor and they just used face unlock. Samsung's doing the same thing basically with the Galaxy Tab S4. Another real life image has been leaked out of the Galaxy Note 9. Most of us already know what it looks like, but if you don't, let's take a closer look at this one. And this image is cut off a lot from here. You can basically see uh, the phone number says unknown. You can see the model number SMNN60U. The serial number is blocked. The IMEI number is blocked out. Um, and you can just see the back of the phone as well. That ring around there, I believe, is just with the camera that was taking the photo or the video of this. Uh, to see the dual lenses at the top left, the flash, and then below that, you see the fingerprint sensor just like the Galaxy Note 9 is supposed to look. So not that exciting of an image, but I still wanted to share that with you guys so you guys could, you know, whet your appetites a little bit in case you are thinking about buying that Galaxy Note 9. Remember, it's coming out, or at least being announced on August 9th, rumored release date August 24th. And the last story of the day is sure to break someone's heart, and that is that the latest rumor coming out of Samsung is that they will be merging the Galaxy S, whatever you want to call it, Plus, S10, S11, Plus line with the Galaxy Note line. Uh, they would be doing this probably not in 2019, more in 2020, because 2019, the rumor is that there's going to be three Galaxy S10 variants. You'll have uh, one that is 5.8, 6.1 and 6.4 and that reason being is that they would have just different sizes for this uh, different lines of it uh, and then Galaxy Note 10 obviously at the end of the year this should go into effect if this does happen and all would be in 2020 the reason for it is that they want to kind of differentiate the lines just because the S10 you know, for instance let's say number names here S9 plus line is very very similar to the Note 9 line they're basically the same size a little bit different uh, they basically have all the same features set up cameras almost everything's the same and they kind of want to differentiate that so it looks like the S line will end up being 
slightly not as great a phone as the Note line because when you get an S10 Plus, it's more or less the same phone as the Note phone. Um, and they're doing this to save money on R&D costs uh, to, again, differentiate the lines and just make it so that they can push out phones that are different, save money, and make the consumer think, hey, these are two different phones, they're not that similar, and if you wanna buy this one in the beginning of the year, and maybe this one at the end of the year, you maybe should do that. So I, it's kind of a smart thing. Um, the, the phones, are the S Plus lines and the and the Note lines are too similar to, uh, to not differentiate at this point. So guys, let's get into the news. The first story of the day is a released official render of the Galaxy Note 9 in lilac purple. Taking a closer look at this Galaxy Note 9 in lilac purple, you can see the two cameras on the back, uh, different size lenses. Uh, on the right hand side of that, you have the flash below that, the fingerprint sensor, Samsung logo, and then you have Galaxy Note 9 below that. And then towards the bottom, that is the carrier over in Europe that's just branding on the phone that I believe that they'll have. Uh, and then you have, you can see all the regular buttons you would on the side. And then on the front of the phone, a very traditional looking Galaxy Note 9. But I currently have the Galaxy S9 Plus in lilac purple and I like it a lot. I think it's a really beautiful color. This one is the same exact color as what I have with my phone. So if the color that I want, it, whatever it doesn't happen to be in stock or I know it's not in stock or they have the ability to choose a certain color, I would not be upset if I did get that lilac purple. What about you guys? Next up, Samsung has a new wireless charging dual pad coming up, most likely when the Galaxy Note 9 comes out. And looking at this pad just from the box alone, you can see the regular charging pad that you've got in the past. And then to the right of that, looks like it's for a watch. But the cool thing is, if you look to the right here a little bit, you're gonna see dual fast charging. Uh, so you can fast charge two devices. Now they can either be charging two phones or charging a phone and a watch and it's compatible Qi certified. So that's cool that it is able to charge uh, a phone on that little you know, base of a uh, watch charging pad, but regardless if you have two phones or you and your wife have two, a phone each or uh, whoever has two phones or a watch and a phone, you're able to be able to uh, fully wirelessly charge on this device. And our last story of the day is about the Samsung Galaxy Watch. We have a little bit more information about this watch due to an FCC filing. First of all, they will have two watches coming out, or two sizes. One will be 46 millimeters, and that 46 millimeter watch is going to have a display of 1.3 inches, which is the same as the Gear S3 watch. Uh, the other one will be a 42 millimeter watch, and it will be having a screen of 1.2 inches. Not a huge difference, but definitely a size difference. You could call it one a guy's, one of a female's watch. But other than that, you're looking at a watch that should have Wi-Fi and LTE. The LTE models should be compatible on all four carriers if you want to get that LTE model. And this watch should also be available the same day the Galaxy Note 9 is. Let's get into the news. The first story of the day is if you like to read, Amazon has 20, that's right, two zero, 20 free books that you can get right now, some from Neil deGrasse, um, some classics in there as well. I will link it down below. If you love to read, um, you're gonna love this. And you can take out 10 of these at a time. You have to have Amazon Prime, so if you're not an Amazon Prime member, sign up, but otherwise, Amazon Prime membership, and that's it. And then just download the Kindle app and you can read these for free. Back in May, the big time leaker Evan Blast said that Google is gonna refresh their products, the Pixel 3, Pixel 3 XL, second gen um, earbuds that they have, and then also they were gonna release a smartwatch, and that still should be ringing true. He hasn't gone back on that, but he also said, something today. Add to this fall hardware lineup, a second generation Pixelbook with smaller bezels scheduled to ship before the end of the year. Now the Pixelbook is a really, really good Chromebook. So if you're into Chromebooks, you will love the Pixelbook. Next up, Anatel, which is a national communications agency in Brazil, had a filing for the Galaxy Note 9 and the 4,000 milliamp battery was confirmed. The 3,300 milliamp battery is in the Galaxy Note 8. And so we're getting 700 more milliamps in the Galaxy Note 9 to make it 4,000 milliamps, which should give you better battery life. Um, and you're supposed to be able to get at least 25 hours of just straight video watching, which is, Crazy, imagine watching a video for 25, or not a video, but videos uh, for 25 hours. It's a lot of time and uh, it's a great upgrade. It's a great reason to possibly have someone upgrade. Maybe they don't like the battery life on the Note 8, but they love the design and the look. Um, you're gonna get that same great design and look with the Galaxy Note 9 with a much 
bigger battery. And the last story of the day is a concept render from Ben Geskin of what he thinks the Galaxy S10 will look like, just based off rumors and news and stories coming out about this phone. And you can see on the back, you have those three cameras and that's what's been expected it to have. Um, you have the Samsung logo below that and then that's the at, that's just his, his the tag on uh, Twitter. To the right of that, you have the flash and then the sensor, but well, on the front of the phone, this is where it gets crazy beautiful. Basically, zero bezels. If you look at the top, there's a small bezel. The bottom has a little bezel. Left and right, no bezel at all. And at the top also, you have the cutouts for the cameras, the two cameras on the front, along with uh, the sensors. And it's all display. You have the fingerprint sensor underneath the display as well, and that's been rumored to have on this phone. The only thing I would have questions about is how videos would look with the cutouts for the cameras and other sensors at the top. Is it gonna look weird? Is it gonna be a black line that plays across there that you can turn on or off if you want, if it bothers you? That is my main question. But I, unfortunately, if you, once you start removing complete you know, bezels and things and uh, the, the non parts of the phone that are just there to free to hold, you're gonna have these weird issues with the cameras and when you watch videos and just use your phone overall. So there you guys go, that is the news for today. My question of the day is what do you think of that Galaxy 10 concept renders? That's something that you can get behind that you would actually like. If the Galaxy S10 looks like that, let me know in the comments down below. I think it's beautiful. I think it's a really great looking phone. I think it's a lot better than those notches on the other phones. Thanks for watching and I'll see you down the road. Peace.